Okay, y'all, so I'm back um, at the house. <laughs> Had to stop at the pharmacy, and then I got my granddaughter something to eat, but I had a conversation with her about this this kid. He seems to be not necessarily a bully, but sort of like a misfit. So she said he's the class clown. He talks about people. He doesn't listen in class. He talks out of turn. So we now we see what we really working with, right? Um, she said that's about as much as she observed because you know she's paying attention to to her schoolwork and what the teacher's telling her. So she's not so much focused on the kid. But she said that he was telling some girls, I guess maybe this happened yesterday. I don't know when they have time to talk about people after class. But she said the girls came up to her and was like, oh, he was talking about you being emo. I'm like, why is he still tripping about emo? But she said the other girls, they compliment a lot of her things, like her jewelry, just her look in general, her braids. They like the, like they like some of the girls like her style. So that's a good thing. They're not like, oh, what the hell? You know, cause that's like a fashion statement with some of these kids. I remember when I was 12, not, well about 10, seventh grade, yeah. So I was, I was 12. Um, I had, I was in the punk rock look. Yeah, I remember the punk rock, you know, the Mohawks. So we all go through different fashion um, trends and things like that. So my granddaughter just happens to be into the emo trend. She likes the grungy look. Um, she has a pair of Converse, they're brand new, but she's like excited for when they get old. You know how we, a lot of black people, we like no scuffs on our shoes. We like it like crisp, right? My granddaughter's the opposite. She likes it grungy looking. She just likes the grungy look, right? She might be, her, her eclectic style might work like somewhere like maybe Indianapolis, you know, those type of cities. But she's here in Brooklyn in the hood, so she's just gonna have to be. I told her, don't change for nobody. You don't gotta adapt to these girls if they don't like your style. But I think they kind of like thinking it's admirable and cute. But some some way, this boy, he just won't let it go. So either he likes her or he's just an asshole. You know, you could be a 12 year old asshole, right? Because these personality traits, they develop in these kids from young. You know what I'm saying? They be having abusive situations going on and then they go to school and they take out their aggression on other people's kids. But he found the wrong kid to mess with. So right now she's, I don't want her to like ignore it because she's a type of child like, she feels like, I don't know how to explain it, but she feels like, well, as long as I appear, appear to have it under control, it's under control. And it's like, no, we, we're not going to do it that way because we don't want to get it out of control. And then by then it's a hot stinking mess. So she said that was all she heard of the situation. I said, okay. I said, how do you feel about it? She said, I don't care because she was like, he don't look like much anyway. So I don't care if he don't like my look. I was like, okay. But we're gonna keep an eye on it and see if he like actually i said well did he say anything to you she said no he didn't say anything to her today i said okay so i was like well how do you like the school i'm gonna be a spitting child i said how do you like the school overall she was like i don't really like it so as i got to talking to her i was like do you think you're gonna like it more once you start to make friends and she said yeah but she has social anxiety so it may take her a little longer to make friends. I said, don't rush to make friends because sometimes, cause even like me, I used to, okay, well, I, I was a little different in in grade school. All, most of the school years, I had my siblings. So when stuff popped off, me and my siblings got it cracking. I was a quiet kid too, but <laughs> I had that other side where I wasn't afraid of people, but Making friends has always been a challenge for everybody. So I told her, I was like, do you feel like you wanna be in that school? She said, well, I wanna give it some time. I said, okay, that's the mature thing to do. And she was like, maybe when I make friends, um, cause I was like, so do you eat alone in the lunchroom? She was like, no, we eat with the class, but people don't really talk to me. And I was like, well, are you making an effort to talk to people? And she was like, no. So I was like, well, I know you're kind of shy, but that's kind of the way to make friends. But I remember 
I remember when I was in school, unless you were extremely, extremely shy, then it would be probably more difficult. But she's not extremely, extremely shy. She's just more of like a reserve. Once she finds somebody to talk to, my, my granddaughter talks, she'll talk. So I think it's just a matter of her fitting into her her niche, like finding the person that she clicks with. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's, it may take a while and it may, my nose is kind of stuffy. It may be that particular class. Maybe the people in that class is just not her cup of tea. So she was like, some of the girls seem okay, but she don't really see anybody that's really her cup of tea yet. So I was like, okay. She was like, she want to give us some more time. My main concern is not so much friends. Is I want to make sure she's catching on to the work. I know they talk bad about the New York school system, but it is a little bit more advanced than the, the Southern schools. She was in a school in Florida because she was staying in Florida with my uh, my narcissistic mom at one point. So she was, in, she was going to school in Florida. Their curriculum is a little behind. I couldn't even believe the way they was teaching those kids uh, division. They wasn't even teaching them like long division. They teaching them some old weird division with circles on, upon circles. I said, girl, if you sit there trying to do it that way, you're gonna be there forever. So I had to teach her like shortcuts, how to cross cancel. Um, I was really good at math when I was in um, uh, high school. Well, high school, I cut class a lot. I was a little bit of a delinquent, but I'm gonna tell y'all why in another video, but I was more so really good in math in, in, in college, in my undergrad. I had to take accounting classes, cal cal calculus, statistics, and majority of those classes, I got A's. So I didn't, I used to be really, really good at math when I was in fourth grade is uh, primary school. Yeah, when I was in primary school, I went to go live in Trinidad and the way they taught us math was at a different level. And when I got back to the United States, I got skipped a grade because their math is, I feel like they teach you the short way to do things. Not the short way, but like more direct. The United States curriculum it's so complicated. To me, it's unnecessarily complicated. They put all these graphs. I'm not saying graphs is bad, but they over they overcomplicate questions. Like when they ask you a question, like you know how they to say they call it uh, problem solving. The question be so unnecessarily complicated that just trying to diffuse what they're asking you takes about most of the time before you actually answer the math question. And that's what I don't understand. Even with the math, they make it unnecessarily complicated. So I feel sorry for these new generation kids when it comes to like um, math and stuff like that. But anyways, even with all of that, when I went to my undergrad, I would go on YouTube, find tutorials that would explain stuff. I would uh, make sure that I follow the formula because the formula is usually where you're gonna get the answer. So all of that, and then I, I was able to pass my classes. So when I was teaching her, my granddaughter yesterday, I couldn't believe when she was showing me what she learned down south, I was like, New York's way of doing it is complicated too, but it still makes sense to me. When she was showing me how they do it in the south, I was like, huh? That's like, I felt like they do it the unnecessarily long way and kind of like, child not childish um kind of like primary school so i was like they're not they're not really it was like i felt like she was doing kindergarten work the way she showed me how they solved the problem so anyways i was like girl you're gonna have to catch up to what we're doing here this is not that's not what they're doing here so i was showing her some of the formulas i told her every day she come home we're gonna do at least we're gonna tackle one one area of math at a time if she finds that if i find that she's still struggling i'm gonna probably have to ask the school to give her extra tutoring if they offer that where she may have to stay after school for like an hour and get that tutoring that she needs because that is going to cause a lot of issues when you're not even if the teacher's teaching a whole thing and you're not even at base level 
everything she's going to be saying at that point is going to sound like gibberish. So I don't want her to feel like on top of a new school, on top of leaving her mom, being in a, she's used to New York though. She's been back and forth. So she, she's not like, she understands New York. She actually likes New York. She likes the shopping. She actually wants to go to Sephora this weekend. I'm like, girl, you're only 12. What do you know about Sephora? She was like, well, I have bags under my eyes. I want to get some concealer and some prime. I'm like, these kids are grown. I wasn't wearing any type of makeup until 16. I wasn't interested in makeup. I didn't like lipstick, none of that. I didn't even wear lipstick until my late 20s. I only used to wear eyeliner when I was 16. But she wants to get concealer. She says she got bags. I'm like, bags? Where? This is bags, okay? Where you got bags at? She's showing me her little, it was some little creases. I'm like, girl, that's not bags. But anyways, um, my 19-year-old want to go to Sephora too. So I'm going to take them to Sephora. My 19-year-old is planning to apply to Sephora to do the esthetician. They, I didn't know Sephora women, uh... What do you call them? Sales reps? I don't even know what they're called, but they started 40K. I thought it was like all commission, like, um, you know how you go to the mall and you see those girls at the makeup counter? I never really asked or was interested in what salary, but I always thought it was mostly commission. But they, she, my daughter was telling me, Sephora, you get good benefits. You get like a benefit package. You get a salary. I was like yeah apply that's really good so they not only have the makeup girls but they actually have an esthetician part where they do like the facials so my daughter's gonna apply to that because she just graduated from esthetician school um yeah so that's basically where she's gonna be with that um yeah that's that's basically it so i'll keep y'all posted on my granddaughter's journey um she probably feels like you know, I'm coming to, I'm coming, leaving my mom, coming to this new school. It's not really diverse. Everybody wants to make a big deal about me being an emo. Um, you know, I, I, I'm already a shy person. So now I got to overcompensate for the fact that these people are singling me out for, for being different from them. It's just like a lot. It's, it's weird how the humans humans put so much pressure on one another. Here she is, minding her own business, just being in herself, being herself. And these, these kids want to make it difficult for her to just have a, a, a smooth journey. Now, I'm not saying all of them, but like the girls that came to her this morning, you know, she's coming in her class. Because I'm pretty sure <laughs> my my granddaughter doesn't give two shits about what they was talking about so i know she didn't go looking to ask them did anybody say anything she's not that type she doesn't give a she doesn't give a damn but they made it their business to come to her first thing in the morning first thing in the morning your whole spirit your whole equilibrium is from reset that means you're starting a fresh day you don't want your first part of your morning to be focused on bullshit and drama and these kids learn drama from early and they come into her yeah he said Da -da 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 about you what you gonna do they ain't say what you gonna do but that's the whole the reason why these people are so focused to bring that information to her is because they want to know what she gonna do but they don't know she got a a, <laughs> a grandmother that is not about that life like y'all might see her little cute innocent emo face and think her parents is is corny but when i go up to the school and y'all hear my voice y'all gonna be like oh oh okay so i'm trying my best not to get involved yet because you know kids gonna be kids but we're not gonna have a situation where you isolating people i will go right up to that class i remember one time my daughter this had to been about maybe fifth grade or something and her teacher she was a piece of work the way she would scream at the students i mean scream so my daughter her assignment was late this is this was when we were going to this, this public school that was hella ghetto. The kids were rambunctious. The teacher was ghetto. Didn't know how to um, control the class. So with her attitude of not knowing how to control her class, any of the good students, she didn't respect them. She still treated all of them the same. 
When you treat all the students the same, it doesn't give the good students incentive to continue to be good. They need to have like a course to teach teachers how to deal with the students, not just on the uh, not just on the academic, but on social skills. This needs to be a curriculum. Like I wish I could volunteer at all these schools in Brooklyn and just go around. Maybe I'll start a program doing that if I decide to stay in New York, where we just talk about we focus on social settings, social cognition. Do y'all understand the value of teaching social influence, the, the, the amount of social influence our kids are affected by from morning, they're sitting in class from morning all the way until three, four o'clock, sometimes five, six o'clock if you're in an after school special, right? You're not teaching the kids anything dealing with social, it's just straight academics. Studies show that other countries focus more on the social versus the academics because they understand bullying they understand community they understand collectivism so they teach the kids how to be collective first mentality wise from kindergarten everybody walks in a line together everybody shares their food when i say share i mean y'all all sit together and everybody is getting along america teaches competition and aggression in these schools if you make the kid feel like they need to gain the teacher's approval, there's not gonna be no coming together. Stop asking the kids to raise their hand and answer a question. Let them all figure it out together. If you have a question for the class, don't say, who has the answer? Whoever has the answer is gonna get this, this, this free time. It's gonna build too much levels of competition and hateration. So now the smart kid, he doesn't want to answer or she doesn't want to answer because she doesn't want to be singled out as the nerd. I'm sick of this shit with this old school curriculum where they're not teaching the kids how to come together collectively. And then they take that disgusting attitude into their adult life and then they don't know how to get along with people. And then when, when they see somebody that's put together, that has a good head on their shoulder, they want to beat the hell out of them because they didn't figure out their life. This is what happens from grade school, from these type of situations where you're not comfortable with your own skin that you got to pick on somebody because they're emo or you got to pick on somebody because they're a different color. Something is wrong with that goddamn picture. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's like it starts with these little picking. And when you go to the Caucasian schools, they do it at a higher level with the mental. When you go to the black schools, they do it at a physical level where they want to beat you up and violence. They promote violence in these schools and then they set the kids up for institutionalized thinking. So when the kid acts up, they put them in a cage, go sit in the corner, go have detention. What about rehabil rehabilitating their mind so that they can stop the behavior? What about that? What about taking time to figure out what's going on with that kid? Like that movie that's called Lean On Me. It took one principal to sit down and realize this is a systematic issue. We promote bad behavior. So now the people that have a mind or they're good or they have good traits, they don't want to flourish in a bad environment because it's not promoted. It's not rewarded. Being good is actually bad in these type of situations. So now there's no incentive for the child to continue to be a good person. Now it's cool to be down with the cool kids who don't give a fuck about school, who doesn't wanna pass the class. What are we talking about here? We gotta start social development. And it's, it's definitely possible. But it's like these teachers and these principals and these deans and these guidance counselors, they wanna play with the fuckery. They know what it is. They prefer this shit. It's a, it's a, it's an effed up system. These teachers come to school with a bad attitude. They don't like the kids. So now we already starting off at a default. There's no like, there's no level of psychological training to become a teacher. It's just go to school for two, three, four years learn a couple of curriculums and go teach some badass kids. 
Where's the incentive? Then they don't pay these teachers that much. So their attitude is like, I don't give a fuck. They don't have a social worker mentality. They just have a, I got get paid, throw these books at these kids and tell them to shut the hell up. It is just ridiculous. They need to teach the kids how to cooperate with one another. That is the first and most important part of the day. If I had a if I had a class, I'm going to teach these kids to how you say communicate. So now when you when the kid comes to class, they teach them if you conversate with your with your with your classmate, you're going to get put in detention. Why? Why? How are you going to tell the kid that you can't conversate? It is a natural human thing to have conversation with people. If I come to work and I have my coworker here in the cubicle, I'm going to want to be like, how was your night? How are you doing? How was your day? So I'm going to get put in time out because I said, hi, how you doing? This is this whole shit is just the way it's all set up is just crazy to me. So if I'm having children, because these are children, they're not. They're not like teenagers, they're children, right? They're still impressionable. They still can be taught. When you come into school, you should be inviting them to have conversations. You have like a little 10 minute get together, like, hey, how was everybody's night? Have the kids get to know one another organically. Studies show that when a child has contact, human contact with the next child, they have, they build what's called compassion. So now the little, um, eclectic things that's different maybe the, the child may have a severe accent maybe like my granddaughter's emo maybe they may have like a, a different style or different way of communicating right now you're not looking at that your your classmate as a stranger you're looking at this as we're a team now we're coming together for a common goal so now when I'm asking questions to the class and somebody don't know the answer I prefer the students to help that student. Not me, the teacher, giving the student the answer. Because now they're looking at me as I'm the God. No, I want you guys to come together and figure this answer out. So Bobby, Bobby's having some difficulties answering two plus two. Guys, without screaming out the answer, can you guys come together? All right, I'm going to put y'all in teams and I want to know how can we help each other figure out how to get to the answer of two plus two and then one team might come together another team might come together but we're not going to do the competition of teams we're all going to be equal in this classroom and you need to say that to the students we're all going to be equal in this classroom we're all going to figure it out together don't worry bobby because there are going to be times where samantha don't have the answer we're going to figure it out together that's how you need to be teaching your kids so that they're not feeling like, oh, this is the favorite student. Fuck that shit. Well, if she's going to be favorite, then that's not going to give me incentive to do the work. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do the work. I'm going to do the bare minimum so that I can get up out this class, but I'm not going to be happy being here. And that's the problem that we're having with these kids. They're not motivated because the teachers are making them hate each other. They can't conversate with one another. They got to sit still in a cute in this chair. Like you sitting in this chair for eight hours. You telling me we can't have a conversation ever. It's just that's why I can't. I, that's why I homeschool my kids. After I got tired of coming up to the school, complaining about the bullying, complaining about the curriculum. And then they're giving the kids all this tons of homework. Ma'am, the kid is coming home at four o'clock. Where are they finding time to be? And it'd be complicated homework. It don't be no like, you know, tell me how was your day and bring back a subject on what you did for the night. It, it'd be like calculus stuff. And it's like, you really want this kid to stay up all night after he sat in school all day. The purpose of sitting in school was for you to figure, help him get to this point, ma'am. So now they're like, well, you, we just want to keep the brain fresh by going home. No, you're burning the kid out. The kid is frustrated because he's burnt out now. It, it's... it's this, the way stuff would be set up with humans, it, it's just mind boggling how we destroy each other on so many levels. So like I used to remember staying up late at night as a grown woman struggling to understand my kids homework because it, it was difficult. But anyways, we made it through it, <laughs> but I'm just saying like 
it's like it's set up to make these kids fail because we're not gonna have let's just be real out of 20 kids it ain't gonna be too many people that's gonna be a doctor that's gonna have that you know go all the way go to 15 years of college no, you're not gonna have that in everybody's his kid that's why doctors get paid so much because it's a high demand and low supply right but we're gonna have kids that will be because if everybody wants to be a doctor who's gonna take out the trash who's gonna be the garbage man who's gonna be the mailman who's gonna be the taxi driver we gotta have reality checks there are going to be common people who are okay with being common there's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes the world go round. That's what diversity is about. Average, above average, and supreme. You know, you got the, what you call that dude? <sighs> My brain went blank. You know, the ones that discovered the light bulb. What was his name? The, 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 the genius. Oh, my mind went blank. You got the geniuses of the world because their IQ, when they did brain studies, certain people have a certain level of brain iq based on how the brain sends signals and you're like oh that's what makes me think outside the box that's what makes me extra creative not me i'm talking about when they do studies on people's brains people that are of a genius level their brain functions different how they process thoughts it's not it's not like taught they were born with this skill just like how you have talent versus skills you know how you got to build a skill but you're born with a talent i was born with the talent to do hair i could do the shit out some hair i was doing hair since i was nine and eight when i started doing dolls i knew how to braid from like coming out my mother's womb so these are things that we just know people just have a certain knack for certain shit we can't take that away from them. Some people are mus musically inclined. Look at Michael Jackson. He was singing from the age of five. He could, they said he could pick up a tune like nobody else. Way better than his brothers at the older age that they was, Michael Jackson was picking up on beats that they couldn't even synchronize. And they did a study on neuro neurology and they realized it's something in the brain that have these unique traits that's why they said psychopaths are born. They're not made. The brain is a funny thing. Some things you can't change about that brain. It was born like that. So when you're dealing with children, you have to understand, even though you want them to be equal, they all come with unique gifts. And we as adults, we cannot destroy that. When you see that a child is acting out, find out why. Don't just ignore it. If you know that kid is the class clown, find out what's going on at home. Pull him to the side at the end of the day. Have conversations with him. Don't make him feel he's on the spot. Just say, hey, how's it going? What's going on? How's your day? You like school? You know, everything good at home? You know, just talk to him. And then you'll start to see certain things by just that one, two conversations. I'm telling you. But these kids, these teachers don't want to take the time out to know each and every student. This is a video of this teacher. I think she teaches autistic children. Um, she's an awesome lady. Black young lady. She dances with them. She teaches them music. She's an all-around cultured woman. And she brings that bright light to, the, her, to her classroom. And I said, that's what teaching is about. You're not going to find too many teachers like her. You're not. And it pulls out the children's natural abilities because now they feel like they're in a safe space to showcase who they really are that you sh that should be your goal as a teacher to bring out your children's best abilities and let them showcase who they are don't beat them down don't allow them to flex with their worst traits so if you know you got a bully in the class or a class clown or a super like if you see that that child has super like how you say mood disabilities like one day they come to school they pretty chill the next day they throwing over chairs or they just acting out because something is going on don't just ignore it don't just be like bobby you need to sit down and behave yourself okay you need to behave yourself it's just like 
ma'am, it's not about behaving. We got to find out why is he acting out? I wish I could just start a volunteer program where I can go to these schools maybe once a month and ex explain to the classes why social cognition is important. We want the kids to have academic skills, true. But you got to remember, every kid that's in this class may not want to ever go to college. They may just want to stop at high school and just discover the world. They may be, have a music, tal music talent ability that they may not need to go to college. They may become a truck driver, right? They may be, you know, there's a lot of jobs where you don't have to go to extreme college. So we need to develop their social skills. We need to develop how they socially relate to others. That's very important. So when they're going on these jobs and they're getting hired at McDonald's, you're not wondering why they're rolling their eyes and sucking their teeth because you want to order a burger. Isn't that why I'm here to order food? So why are you mad? Why are you mad that I'm ordering food from you? It's like you come in there, you say, May I have a number five? And then you got the, the socially inadequate person who's like, you want a number what? Um, can I have a number five with a side of, with an apple pie, please? A number five? Um, hold on a second. Let me see if we got that. Like, you know, everybody wanna come in here and order food all the time. Like, golly. So you said a number five, right? Okay. And what do you want with that number five? Um, doesn't it come with fries? <sighs> what size, ma'am? What size did you... Uh, well, I meant to ask you, what size did you want? Oh, okay. A medium. That's going to be five sixty-five. dollars um, Did you get the apple pie? You didn't say you want apple pie. I said I want a number five with an apple pie. <sighs> Hold on a second. Let me see if I got to do this over again. Because it's always something. It's always something with these. <sighs> Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a minute. You rushing me. Don't rush me. Let me let me figure out if I got to do a refund. I ain't even paid a lady yet. But she want to ask me if I want to do it. This is what I'm talking about. The social skills is so inadequate. They getting so frustrated just to take an order. It's all. It's, it's just Everywhere. Everywhere. It's not even about their life is fucked up because they could have a nice house. Parents is doing well. They the one wanted to actually get the job. But their attitude is a lack of social cognition. It's very poor here in America. You go to different places and it's even with the men. You go to the mechanic. He acting like he mad you bringing your car. Sir, I'm giving you money to fix my goddamn car. Why you got an attitude? I could see if there was an actual situation that popped off where we had some discrepancies about the, the fee or something like that. Well, you could be coming in on the rip, pleasant as ever. Hi, I'm willing to pay. Like, I got, I got the money to pay you. But you nasty for no reason. No one ain't never teach you goddamn manners. This is what we're dealing with. Lack of social cognition. And it starts from young. And it's just like... I'm not trying to brag about Trinidad. I'm not. I'm from Trinidad. But one of the things that we did not tolerate, I would get cussed out as a child if I opened the door or I answered the phone and I didn't say good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, sir, ma'am. If you didn't say uh, good morning or good evening, they finna cuss you, rip you a whole new asshole because they do not tolerate any level of lack of mannerism. If your face too skin up, if you're too mad, if you're too, you're too looking like the Grinch, your face is like, you call it the resting bitch face, or oh, they finna check you. What you, what you so angry about? I remember I used to walk down the street and it was always the Jamaican men. They'd be like, girl, fix your goddamn face. What you so mad about? And I'm like, I'm, I was about 16, 17. I'm like, why are he telling me I gotta fix my face? And I understand it now. Because that goes with you into your older years when you don't understand how to have social skills. I remember even black American guys would be like, 
Shorty, why are you not smiling? Pick your head up. And I used to get so annoyed. Don't, don't tell me what to do. Because <laughs> I was like, I was angry. I was an angry teenager. I had a horrible parenthood. My parents were horrible people. I didn't have love. I was angry. I was sad. I was depressed. And it showed on my face, even though I was pretty, it didn't matter. I was upset all the goddamn time. I'll be walking down the street with the rest in bitch face because I hated my life back then, right? And I remember guys will always tell me, don't look so sad. And it's like, it's easy for you to say because you don't understand my walk of life. But I understand it now. They were trying to build me up, even just walking past me. Like, wow, you're a beautiful sister. What's going on? Why you look so upset? But you know, Jamaicans have a harsh way of saying things. So I'd be walking down the street. Fix up your face now. What are you so angry about? I, I can't really talk Jamaican. I talk more Trini. But I understood, like back then, I knew I'd be walking towards it. Like a, I could tell an island person. So I'd be walking towards one. And I'm like, I know they're going to say something about my face. Because I just knew it, right? Because I used to walk with the mean face. Like, my lip stayed like this. All day, every day when I was a teenager. Now, I smile a lot. I can't even stop smiling sometimes. Because God has blessed me. He's gotten me through the dark struggles. The Tantanos energy. The deaf instinct energy from Sigmund Freud. He's gotten me past that. So I understand now what it's like to embrace life. Even when things are hard, right? So when I'm walking down the street, I ain't got the smile and the rosy cheeks. I'm like, you know, so I could relate to those people, like, especially, especially like the girls that work at the cash register, whether it be Walmart or mcdonald's i don't take it as serious because i understand they were raised to not develop social cognition so when i go in there i kind of force them to have a conversation with me i'd be like how was your day you go to school you in school and at first they'd be annoyed but then they actually start talking to me and be like yeah i'm in school so sometimes you as the adult you have to still keep helping these kids because when I was young and I had the the nasty faith I remember older men would train me to stop acting like that they'd be like fix your face girl or shorty keep your head up stop looking so sad shorty smile put a smile on your face and I'd be like shut the hell up I don't want to smile but now I understand they were training me to deal with social skills social cognition and it's deeper than social skills. I call it social cognition because in order to develop an attitude, an attitude comes from your thought patterns, your feelings, your emotions, and your perception on certain things. It develops into an attitude. Attitudes are very hard to train. Once a person develops a certain attitude, it becomes a mindset. So that's why it's something you have to train, you have to instill. So it's not like just a skill. A skill might be more of a physical thing, but an attitude goes so deep into your, into your, your, um, your equilibrium, your, 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 your mind, your body, your feeling, your soul, it becomes a part of you. So you don't want to develop a bad social cognition all through your life. You gotta get better at it. You gotta learn. You gotta listen to self-help books. I used to listen to Tony Robbins all the time in my early 20s. He was a motivational speaker. So you got to find people that are motivational speakers. If you can't get to like a therapist, go online and start reading and listening to self-help books. It helped me throughout my life. It really did. People that have been where I've been and they're explaining their journey and how they fought depression and demons and stuff like that and they might still be going through it but they have a better outlook you want to start following people that have a better outlook stop listening to podcasts where everybody's still with the bad social cognition they don't have any social skills they're just angry at the world stop listening to people that tell you 
to do to be alone oh you don't need nobody it's one thing to have self-love self-awareness and, and individuation but it's another when you're going about it becoming a bitter old person and just having that attitude f the world everybody's out to get me i i just want to do this alone beware of those type of situations because it invites demons humans were not meant to be alone um when you live like in the woods and you're by yourself i'm just saying gins live in dark cold places that's why a lot of times when those people go out there and they live in the woods and they're all alone they develop mental illness the studies show that when you put inmates in prison in social and uh solitaire what do you call that something confinement what do you call it isolation i'm trying to remember the word solitary confinement right it, studies show that if you put them in solitary confinement too long they go insane they've done experiments on this stuff mk20 what is it mk ultra that was an experiment to see if people will go insane if you put them in a room too long by themselves or you put them in dark too long or you deprive them of sleep too long inmates will rather be with other inmates than to be in a room by themselves sometimes i used to think like if i was in jail i think i would want to be in a solitary confinement by myself not around a bunch of uh, crazy people but you don't know you get there they put you in this dark cold cell nothing to look at and after 24 hours, you want to get out. You don't have no books. You're watching no TV. It goes to show you the human mind is not meant to be alone. I'm not saying you got to be with a, a mate, you know, but you got to be with people. Even if you go visit the nursing home, the, the, it shows that when you go visit a nursing home and you volunteer there, your happiness level go up. Happiness comes from making other people happy. So you, if you a depressed person, go around helping other people and make them happy. It's contagious. I'm pretty sure if you're watching me and I'm telling you all about happiness, it probably will, if somebody did a brainwave check on you, you'll probably see it may increase some brainwaves that will add to your level of pleasure, happiness. People want to hear good things. We don't wanna hear doom and gloom every day, all day. If I watch a scary movie and I watch more than one in a row, my brain shuts off. I don't want to see the third one. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. We don't like to see humdrum stuff all the time. So brightness, happiness, it helps. <clears throat> when I start my... Well, okay, when I get more consistent... I don't want to say when I start my... Because I already started my channel. When I get more consistent, I want to do lives where people can come on and it's like more of a coming together i don't want y'all to look at me as like i'm the teacher and you know what i mean like we all learning together from this big scope of life that we call it life experience collectively i learn from you guys because i'm not perfect i have my mood swings where i feel down i feel confused you know what I mean? Like, we all go through things. Nobody's perfect. So, that's really what I want to say. Um, stop listening to these, like, these um, naysayers with the bad relationship advice. Um, you know, the super religious person that's going to always condemn you to hell. Is like, is there anything nice you got to say? You know what I mean? I cannot listen to a podcast where all you keep talking about is God putting me in hell. I can't. So what's the reward here? You know what I mean? Like, can we talk about the reward some of the days? I don't mind you telling me what's to come or what God wants from me. But don't make me feel like as soon as I turn you on, I know you're going to be saying everybody's a sinner and everybody's a horrible person and everybody's going to hell. I don't want to hear that all day, every day. And I understand sometimes people don't want to hear me talk about the bad things of the world. So I try, I try to bring variety, variety 
to my channel. I don't want to always talk about the bad people, narcissistic people or people with borderline or I don't want to always talk about the bad people. I want to talk about, well, how do you get past a certain situation? You become happy. Like, what does that look like? Can we talk about getting to the goal? The goal is to leave the trauma behind and just pick up a new life. You hit the reset button, you become a new person. How do you do that? Everybody's process is different. Some people can do it faster than others. And it all goes back to your innate traits. That's what, that's what will determine how fast or how slow you are going to recover. It's based on you as a person and your unique situation and your unique makeup. How is your DNA? What is your DNA like? Is it hereditary in your family that everybody got a bad attitude? Is it hereditary that everybody is doom and gloom? Chances are you may have some of that traits. You may have to flush out first the bad traits, even just to get to the good traits. So that's what I want to talk about. When I become more consistent and I go live, what does that entail? What is the process? What will be the assessments? What would be the goal and how do we practically implement that into our lives the implementation is where the work comes in it's not just going to be a just a one work in the park for example one of the works that i said is i want to volunteer in some of these school systems and talk about how do we build our children's social cognition and one of the ways that you can build your child's social co cognition in a classroom setting is to decrease the competition in the classroom because everybody wants to be noticed everybody wants to be accepted it is a natural human trait that we want to be accepted so if the teacher is the goal we want the acceptance of the teacher it is now the teacher's duty to set the, the precedence on how that energy of that classroom is going to be stop making the students compete with one another for your approval make it a team effort when you start giving out activities and curriculums the curriculum needs to be of a team building for example the best way to explain that if you ever took a business class or if you ever went to business college um my undergrad is in healthcare management so technically that's a bba it's a business associate's degree right it's not associate, it's an undergrad. I'm sorry, it's a four-year it's a four-year degree, but they call it a BBA. It's a Bachelor's of Business Arts. So what that means is that I would have been a healthcare administrator in the hospital working as a healthcare administrator. But once I took the curriculum and I was so close to graduating, I just did it anyway. But I gravitated more to the counseling side and I, I wasn't offered that when I went to speak to a recruiter. So since I was already in the curriculum, I just finished the, the, the whole degree. But when I started looking for work, my first internship was at the VA hospital and I was a counselor assistant to the social workers. And I worked with the VA, the veterans, um, the, you know, the post-traumatic stress syndrome and stuff like that. So I realized that I had gravitated more to that than to the administrative side. Does that make sense? But my point is, with that degree, I had to take a lot of business classes, which is why I had to take accounting. Um, I had to take business administration, you know, scheduling, things like that. Organizational management. Those classes was hard, but what made that class a little bit different for me is that we had to come and build teams. They, they made us come together with like teams, right? And then we had to work on specific projects, like making a business proposal project and things like that. So we all had to share the, um, so like, let's say I'm working with a team. They would write the first half of the paper I might write the last four pages. Someone else might do the graphs. Someone would be the presenter. So at the end, we would kind of tell the presenter, well, this is what we came up with, da, 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 da. So we all had to work as a team because we all needed each other. So it becomes like now you're dependent on someone else to get a good grade. And of course, you're gonna have your little issues within a team where someone might be slacking. 
So you might have to have that conversation, but that's what makes it even better. Now you're forced to talk to that person to find out why haven't you bought your part of the team, like your workload or whatever. You might find out they're getting beat upside the head at home. Now you have more compassion for your teammate because now you understand why they couldn't get the work done. You may be able to assist them, say, well, is there something I could do to help you get to that point? You know what I mean? This is all part of what's going on. So that's a practical way of looking at, well, how can I avoid, how can I, how you say, how can we, as a, a collective unit, help the school systems? How can we help our children? So these are things that we can be addressing on lives. If you're in a situation where, and I read this a lot on a lot of comments with um, these narcissistic channels, right? And then, and I read the comments. I, I'm, a, I'm a comment reader. I read a comment a lot. It gives me an idea of the mindset of the people. And I'll read something like, I've been with my narcissist for like 10 years and I don't know how to leave them, but they're a horrible person. And it's like, we can't focus on what they're doing. We need to focus on why you keep staying. We need to focus on why you feel the need to write that comment. Are you looking for somebody to save you? Why haven't you just gotten up and left, right? So we need to be able to figure out what is a practical way, instead of just talking bad about the person you're with, what is a practical way that will give you the gumption to say enough is enough, I love myself more? Okay, you're scared about bills. Okay, let's talk about it. These are practical ways to get people to, to, to now think for themselves and stop waiting for a savior. It's all about building your own self. How do you get there? Maybe somebody needs to put that little, that little battery pack on you and then you say, okay, I'm going to take this torch and I'm going to run with it. Thank you for giving me the light that I needed to light this torch. But I already knew I had it in me. Because the whole idea is you already got it in you. You may just need to be reminded of how to light the torch again. You see what I'm saying? So we all sometimes we lose our mojo. We lose our libido. And we forget how to re reignite it. And it may take a person that's either been there, done that. Or they just naturally gifted like that. Where they've had that libido and they never lost it. So we need to be around people <clears throat> that will give us that go-to, that gumption. Stop listening to people that is of the deaf instinct. As soon as you listen to them, it's all about extracting and taking away from the positive light that you have within you. If they ain't telling you, don't be in a relationship with nobody because all people are bad, you need to turn that station off. We, we, we tired of hearing that type of stuff, okay? You can still, if you love yourself and you know your self-worth, you're not going to attract a bad person in your life to the point where you're okay with the behavior of the bad person and you're allowing them to be bad to you. If you're still allowing a person to be bad to you, that means you don't love yourself enough. Then we're just going to call it what it is. You don't love yourself enough because if you love yourself enough, you're not going to stay in a situation that makes you worse. Okay? So even though, let's say, you're in a situation that's really bad and you haven't gotten out of it right this minute, but your plan is to, because you want to be strategic, you can't just up and leave certain situations. Some people might have you by the balls or have you by the tits where you can't just walk away. You might lose everything. So you might have to be strategic. I'm not talking about those type of situations. I'm talking about the door is right there. It's like, hello, I'm here and I'm unlocked and you refuse to walk away because you're so weak to bad treatment. You become like the teachers that I talk about that allows these kids to come in her classroom or his classroom and wreck havoc in there. And it's like, and when I say wreck havoc, I don't mean the kids is just doing what they want. I mean that you see that there's bad behavior going on and you think just telling the kid to be quiet, you've done your job. Because these parents are entrusting you with their children for eight hours a day. That is a very heavy responsibility on a teacher. 
So you got to be good at what you do. You signed up for this. You, you got to you gotta go through with it. Because either way, it's going to be a stressful situation. Wouldn't you rather to be able to go to a class where the kids are cooperative and make your job a whole lot easier? Well, honey, you got to invest in that type of way of doing things from the rip. From the minute you go in that classroom, there should be an agenda and everything should be done with full focused attention, intention on what is the end goal for these students other than just them getting a, a good grade. And that's what will make an awesome teacher. That's what will make an awesome principal. The principals need to be going to each classroom every day and checking the temperature of the teacher, the temperature of the students. See who's out of equilibrium. Pull the teacher to the side and say, listen, I was watching, I stood, I stood outside your door for about a half an hour, I'm not criticizing you. I just like to observe what's going on. Maybe you didn't notice it, but I'm noticing there's a student in the corner he looks like he's always picking on somebody. Let's talk, let's talk about it. Let's have a meeting with his mom. Let's get to the bottom of the situation because we're not going to raise no rug rats and we ain't raising no prisoners. That's the mindset you need to have with these kids. And you need to do it with love and compassion and not aggression, not anger, not punishment. Studies show that the harsher the punishment the more the habit comes into the, the bad habit stays with the person. Harsh punishment, harsh punishments don't work. Anyways, I got to go, go handle my business. Again, it was nice talking to y'all. I didn't really think I was going to be on here so long, but that's how it be sometimes with me. I just go with the feeling of stuff. Anyways, I love you guys, and I'll talk to y'all maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I might take a break from YouTube for, you know how I do. I'll come on full force, and then I'll go relax for a couple days. <laughs> and it really don't be because of the videos. It be because I be got having a whole lot of stuff going on, and then sometimes I feel drained, you know, emotionally or physically or whatever. So right now, I got a little bit of energy to finish some of my presentation. I got four days to do a 10-page paper and a presentation. So wish me luck. All right, bye.